game. So I apologize. I look worse in the wet t-shirt contest with the white shirt on. All right, well, Coach Kell, let's make an opening statement, then we'll take questions. We have microphone holders on both sides of the room. If you have a question, please raise your hand. I usually have like 11 thingamajiggies up here, but only two. But no, it was uh, a really good win for our guys. I mean, this is Indiana is a hard team to, to prepare for. They're a hard team to play against. First of all, because they're so good. They have so much talent. Secondly, because they're well coached. You know, thirdly, because they always they they do a lot of different things on both ends, with mixing defenses within a possession, and you know, trying to keep you off balance at all times. And so, to be able f with playing four true freshmen and two sophomores, for them to be able to kind of withstand all that and to withstand nine for 14 three point shooting in the first half, you know, that's uh, we stuck to our guns though. We stuck to our principles of sticking with the zone. Um, and, then, and it evened out. They missed some shots they normally hit. And the, the ones they were making in the first half, they, they missed some of the ones. Johnson, Farrell, they had some clean looks. They just didn't go down. But, you know, we'll take it. I said to the guys at halftime, you know, both teams were kind of scoring at will in the first half. You know, you beat, both teams were having a hard time stopping each other. And I just said to the team uh, at halftime, I said, whatever team kind of has an extended series of stops is going to win the game because both teams are in such a great offensive rhythm. And, you know, I think what, you know, we held them to about eight points there for, for 12 minutes or whatever it was, uh, maybe even more until they got going a little bit late. But, you know, big time win for us and our program as we continue to build because of the respect I have for Indiana. I mean, I'm a, I know what Indiana means to college basketball, you know, especially growing up in the Midwest. It's one of the elite, elite programs in college basketball. So have the opportunity to coach against them and, and, and be fortunate enough to win, it's a, it's a really good win for our team. Chris, Trey Dems really put the team on his back in that second half. Yeah, Trey can do that. You know, he got going. And again, it was hard to run a lot of plays against them because they were mixing defenses within every possession. You know, every time we were making a pass, they were going to a zone and maybe back to a man. And so I told the guys, don't worry about running plays. Like, we just have to get to open areas and hit open people. And then when they rush out on you, you gotta you gotta be confident with driving the ball, get to the basket, and, and make plays. And they do a really good job of keeping you off balance with that. So I was proud of Trey, and uh, I thought he made some big time shots, some big time decisions and reads, and especially because I thought McIntosh got <laughs> tired there in the second half. I, you know, I thought he was uh, really winded. I was hoping we could get to the finish line. You know, it's a, it's a real emotional for a kid like that. You know, you grow up in the state of Indiana. The first time you get a chance to play IU, uh, it's a big deal. It's a big deal, and, and I know he was uh, he was exhausted at the end of that one. So uh, Trey was fantastic, and I really thought our wings defensively were fantastic in the second half. The way they overload, you know, if, I can't wait to watch the film, but uh, Sanjay Lumpkin, I thought he was everywhere in the zone. He was covering a lot of different areas. I thought Law was doing the same. And then I thought we rebounded better in the second half. Uh, Ola got a ton, and um, you know, we gotta, when we have two guys that are holding it, we got to find a way to – call the other guy off. I was getting ready to kill him there a couple times at the end, but um, you know, we're playing well. Uh, the guys are confident. There's nothing like winning. Um, it builds confidence, and I'm really proud of, of what we've done these last couple weeks. Besides them missing a few shots, what was different about your defense in the, at the start of that second half? I thought we were a little bit more active. Um, their dribble penetration was hurting us in the zone. You know, and Yogi's so good, he gets in there. And, he's, and he gets in those creases and he finds guys. He's like, uh, he's a great playmaker when he gets in the paint. And I thought we did a poor job in the first half locating the shooters when we were getting broken down. I thought we, in the second half, even though they missed some, I thought we did a little bit better job of kind of getting them off their spots. The shots weren't nearly as in rhythm, maybe as they were in the first half. But when you're playing a team that, you know, I, we would have had no chance guarding them in man. So we had to stick with what we were doing. And, um, Unfortunately, you know, they had a little bit of a cold streak and we were able to get a lead. Chris, do you have any season long goals at this point about playing a tournament along the line? You know what, well, we're not thinking about it right now. You know, we're, we're just thinking about continuing what we have. We, you know, really, Teddy, what we did after the Michigan State game, we really wiped the slate clean. You know, we came in the next day and we wiped it clean. We set our record zero and zero. We're going to start over. You know, we're going to do some new things. We completely changed how we practiced. I mean, I'm old school. Now there's rap music going on in the, in the, in the, uh, when we're doing drills. And I just, we needed to get some spirit. You know, we needed to get some energy. We needed to get some spirit. 
Uh, we went to the zone, which was a drastic change, but you know, just because we thought we needed to do something new, we needed to start over. We'd lost 10 games in a row. So, you know, right now we're just thinking about <coughs> being 4 0, you know, and that's, that's what we are since we started fresh. And I'm just really proud of these kids because it would have been easy what, what we went through for about six weeks. It would have been real easy to say, you know what, let's just wait till next year. And these kids refused to do it. And it's all the credit goes to them because they're the ones out there playing. My staff and I are just trying to put them in positions and, and motivate them. But these kids deserve a lot of credit because they're, they're really playing their tails off. Uh, you guys give up 40 points in the first half and you hold them completely scoreless for 10 minutes and 6 seconds. What happened to that? Well, again, I, I thought they missed. You know, they, they were so hot from three in the first half. I thought we were a little more active, but then I also thought they got cold, you know, and Sometimes that happens. You know, the shots they were making in the first half, they just went dry a little bit, and that's part of it. You got to get a little luck in that regard, and that's why it was so important when they did start missing for us to hold them to one shot. I mean, I don't know how you can block out Troy Williams. That guy is incredible. You know, I keep telling my guys, block that guy out, and they're looking at me like, yeah, you try to do it. I mean, that guy, he is some kind of athlete, and uh, so, you know, I thought we were limiting him one shot, and and they missed some shots, and. We were just trying to stay active. I didn't want our guys to get demoralized by the fact that they made so many shots in the first half. Uh, Chris, how about set the career mark for Blocks tonight? Uh, with more than a year left at that door, where do you think that places in the history of the program? Well, I mean, it's hard for me to say. I'm, I'm just really proud for Alex. I, I mean, I have great respect for the history of the program. But, you know, for me, it's all about what we're doing going forward, you know. And, and you know, all I know is the kids worked incredibly hard since I've been here. Um, when I first got the job, he looked me in the eye and he said, Coach, I want you and your staff to, to help me become a player, to show me the way, show me what I need to do. And he's worked. He's worked through some struggles. He's changed his body. Um, just really proud of him. You know, he's become, he's become a force in this league when, you know, I think his freshman year, a lot of you guys didn't know if that was going to happen. And it's a testament to his hard work and, and what he's done. And, you know, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll see a lot more block shots in the next uh, year and a little bit of change. Good. Time out at 227. It looks like it's slipping away. What do you see in your players' eyes, and what is your message? To do well, again, we just uh, you just reinforce that we're going to win the game. You know, we were still up by 10. You know, we had a couple. We missed a layup. Uh, Brian had the layup to go up 16. You know, they come down and, and get a layup, and we turn it over and they score, and all of a sudden now it's 10. And 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 then we had another turnover, and you know we uh, we just tried to we tried to calm their nerves. We still had a 10 point lead. There was two and a half minutes to go. We said, be strong with the ball, you know, be get to open areas, hit open people. When they foul you, let's make our free throws. And we get a couple more stops and we'll win. And, um, you know, I, I like the look that I saw in the huddle. The guys were, were confident. And that's what happens when you've won some games. You know, they, they stop thinking about how they're going to lose and they start thinking about how are we going to win this thing. No flashbacks. No, I'm, I'm done with flashbacks. You know, once, once we turn the page, um, and we started after Michigan State. I, I, I closed the book on what, what had been happened before that, and I've tried to keep a fresh approach with these guys as, as we've gone into this last month. But after the Michigan State game, what did you see from the team that like, made you think that they could go on this type of run, and are you at all surprised by it? Well, yeah, I mean, I, did, I, was, I was down. I mean, after Michigan State, we all were down, and that was a low point. You know, we, they came in here and just thoroughly thoroughly hammered us every which way. I saw a lot of defeated heads in the locker room. I saw heads down, include me, include our staff. And just my instincts though is we gotta, we're not just gonna go down like this. You know, that's, that's not how I'm wired. It's not how my staff's wired. And we, we stayed up all night in the office and we just got our heads together and we said, what can we do? What can we do to, to, to turn this thing around? And we came up with some ideas. We met with our guys. We talked about a fresh approach starting clean and to their credit they bought in you know they we can say all this stuff and all these ideas but unless those guys be, believe and buy in to what you're saying it's not going to happen so it, it's it's a testament to what those kids did they bought into it they said you know what you're right let's have a great month and to see them come out and win four straight games has has been really fun for me to watch and, and makes me really proud chris um big laws put together at least three straight uh, solid games so. Good to see him carry, you know, be consistent. That's, that's been the question. Yeah, and you know, I tried to tell all of you guys, you kept telling, what's wrong with Vic? What's wrong? He's a freshman, man. He's a freshman. It's not easy at this level. He's a freshman trying to find his way. He wants to do well. He's putting pressure on himself. 
And what I love about what Vic did, he just got in the gym and he got to work. And he, he didn't listen to outside voices. He listened to me, he listened to my staff. And he, it's paying off for him. And I mean, he's going to be an outstanding player. I mean, there's no question about it. And I'm just so proud that he's seeing his hard work pay off for him. And he just stayed the course. And that's what you got to do. I mean, he's still a kid. And now for him, the big challenge for him is like you got to know why, the formula why you're playing well. You can't be young and fall back into some old habits. You got to continue to work the way you've been working, continue to prepare the way you've been doing it. And again, we don't win. You know, 14 and 8, whatever he got, his activity, he was, he was tremendous tonight. Do you feel comfortable playing at the pace that you guys were in for much of the first half? You know what, we kind of, Indiana kind of made us do that. I mean, I wanted to slow it down a little bit more. I really did. Um, you know, I didn't feel there was any way we could win a shootout. So 40 to 40 at me at halftime, it, I didn't feel good about it. I was glad we had 40 points uh, the way they were scoring. But the pace was too fast. It was too high scoring. Um, we weren't going to win a game in the 80s. So, um, you know, I thought we did a better job in the second half of getting the stops and, and kind of getting it more to our liking. But, yeah, I mean, eventually – I love watching Indiana play. That's how I, I mean, that's how I want to play. That's how I loved playing. You spread the floor. You have all guys who can handle, pass, and shoot. You know, they play with great energy. They're well coached. The spacing's great. I mean, I, I think they're really fun to watch. When I'm, not, when I'm not playing, when I'm watching, I really enjoy the way they play. And it's something, it's a style that I would love to do more of here as we continue to get that kind of personnel. Chris, you talk about maybe some of the outside shooting being key, but Mascara Perea has been very dominant this season when he's been healthy. He only went one for four tonight. The team just lost. Talk about a lot defensively down low and how you were able to really just take away the interior besides keeping them down. Well, you know, it's not really man on man because we're in a zone. But you know, I, I, like I've said before, the zone really helps Alex. You know, I, I think what teams were doing and, and rightfully so when we were in man to man, they were just bringing him away from the basket and putting him in pick and rolls the whole game. It gets him tired. It gets him away from the basket. He's not in a position to rebound, block shots. What the zone has done is, is, is kind of let him anchor the middle of our paint. And he likes it. Our guys like it. And, you know, he's done a really good job of, of keeping his feet. He, he stays down on those fakes where he's not fouling, which is good. And when you're seven feet like that and you have your hands up, it becomes difficult to score against. So uh, it's been a good thing for him, you know, to be able to be in there. But, you know, it wasn't one-on-one -on -one because we were playing zone the whole game. Time for one more. How would you assess where this program is right now after four in a row in the Big Ten and being in Indiana like this? Well, I think the thing is you can't get too high and you can't get too low. You know, I think uh, when we lost ten in a row, the sky was falling and everybody wanted to know, you know, the progress is not being made and, you know, let's abort the mission. This isn't going to work. And, you know, a lot of people in this room were saying that. But, uh, you know, that you got to stay the course, man. When, when you're low, you're, you, you got to keep fighting. And, and and then when it's high, you can't get too high. You got to keep working. You got to stay the course. You got to work, and you know you 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 get the fruits of your labor when you when you play well and you win and you're able to go in that locker room and celebrate. That's fun because we put a lot into this. But we have a long way to go. I mean, we have a long way to go. This is a great step. It's a good two weeks, but it's far from where we <coughs> want to be as a program. But it's exciting to have these kind of wins. It's it's a it's a step in the right direction. All right, thanks, All right, coach. Thank you guys.